All right, class. First off, as always, good day. Um, the video today is going to be talking about three events that happened between the Industrial Revolution and World War I. Um, two of them uh, kind of go hand in hand. And the last one is a promise I made to a student at the beginning of the school year. Because remember, I told you guys, whatever you wanted to learn, tell me. And I'll be sure to go through that. Um, one student asked for one particular topic, and we are going to go over it. All right. Now, I did make some changes to this um, PowerPoint than I did in um, class. So if you were there for partially through the class lecture, and you're watching this video right now, you're going to see a little bit something different. Okay, and I'll be sure to point that out to you. All right, but other than that, let us begin. All right, so here is your warm-up picture. Um, go ahead, look at it, analyze it, write down uh, what do you see. Okay, create a list, um, analyze it, background, everything, and what do you see? Okay. The second part of this question is, what's happening? Uh, what is this artist trying to say? Um, do you think this is something political? Do you think it's telling an event? What do you think? Um, so it's up to you. It's what do you see? Okay. Uh, let's see what else. What else? What else? No, well, that's about it. So just uh, analyze it and uh, make sure you put on the notes on the side warm-up okay so here's the thing last week we talked about mckinley in the 1896 election and how he basically wanted um to in a sense kind of help big business out and big business companies monopolies wanted him as president as well because of uh, uh, jennings bryant uh, now, the thing is, he won. But when the 1900 election came around, people were still upset with him. You know, they they see through the facade of, you know, uh, you know, I care about the people, things like that. And they didn't care if their bosses fired them. They were ready to uh, vote for the other person, whoever it may be. But the thing is, to kind of sway them to their side, uh, McKinley added Teddy Roosevelt to the ticket. And the thing is, Teddy Roosevelt really didn't like the big business. He was considered like a monopoly buster, you know, a trust buster, as they called them. Um, and that's the thing that they knew. If we get him as vice president, the vice president really has no power whatsoever. They're just there, in a sense, kind of like in the background, right? They really don't have that much power compared to the president. So what better way to have this guy under control than to put him as vice president? Because if he's just a senator or a congressman or whatever, he can create noise. He can be an opponent to the president. So vice president was a good tactic to have him on. Now, on September 6, 1901, while at the Pan American uh, Exposition in Buffalo, New York, President McKinley was assassinated. Now his name was George B. Cordayu. Now the thing is McKinley actually liked to go shake hands with the people, right? He liked to meet them, but a lot of people in his administration were like, you shouldn't do this. This is a bad thing. You know, some people had a feeling, but McKinley, you know, trying to be, uh, you know, want to be him to go see the people. He wanted to shake their hands, get to see them, things like that. And Cordo Yu was there. He put a handkerchief over his gun. And when McKinley came to shake his hand, he shot him twice. Now, um, there were some people who were near uh, Cordo Yu who basically tackled him and beat him up. And the thing is, McKinley actually stopped the people from beating him up. You know, he, he got shot twice, right? The first shot, it ricocheted out of his... Um, his coat bucket, uh, button, I'm sorry, and it went into his sternum. That was a minor uh, injury. The bad one was the one that went into his stomach. Now, the thing is, he had to have an emergency um, surgery done 
and the only doctor that was around was a gynecologist. But still, he was able to um, suture the wound to uh, stop the bleeding, to heal it up. But the thing is, he felt, you know, he couldn't locate the bullet. He felt that it was still in the back of um, McKinley. So the thing is, McKinley, he's, you know, doctors start saying, oh, he's doing good. They're telling the press he's doing fine. He's doing well. Um, but the thing is, September 13th, his condition got really, 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 really bad. And then on September 14th, <clears throat> he dies from gangrene and blood poisoning. Um, some people, historians at the time, and some newspaper people at that time, felt that the bullet was poison when we know now it wasn't. Um, chances are it was a reaction to the shot. His uh, organs, you know, gave out, some stuff like that. But uh, the point of the fact that the matter is he died which then makes the vice president the president. All right, so now Theodore Teddy Roosevelt becomes the new president. Now, when he was younger, Teddy was very rich, right? The Roosevelt's were a rich family. And he didn't like those rich people, the way they were acting, you know, kind of pompous and, oh, Buffy. <laughs> you know, they, he didn't like that kind of stuff. And so he tried to give this persona that he was a tough man, a, a mountain man, a hunter, things like that. And after a while, he started kind of living that persona. You know, there were times he went on safari. He hunted buffalo. He hunted um, uh, rhinos and, you know, things like that. And he would be, you know, hunting bisons, um, deer, bears, things like that. You know, so he kind of lived the outdoors life, and he actually really loved the outdoors. The uh, National Forest System, that's thanks to Teddy, you know. Uh, so a lot of that stuff, nature, he really liked. And also, Teddy was actually very fit, all right? He was very, you know, strong and things like that. Um, so he had that tough physique. He had that tough mentality. Uh, so he was just really... a tough man. Now the thing is, in the Spanish-American War, he actually leads a group of these guys called the Rough Riders. They were a cavalry group. They rode the horses and they charged into battle. And one of their most famous was the Battle of San Juan Hill. All right. Now I'm not going to go too much into it, but if you're interested, you should really look it up. It's, it's a really neat battle. Um, thing is, as president, he does what he says he's going to do. He attacks the big businesses. And uh, he's known as a trust buster. Now, he, go, he goes two terms. And he vows not to do a third term out of respect for George Washington. All right. Now, the thing is, the next person in line, they tell people, you should vote for this guy. His name is Taft. Now, Taft is different from Teddy. Uh, when we talk about physique-wise, it's a total 180. Teddy was very fit, very outgoing, things like that. Whereas Taft, he really had no true physical physique type of thing. He was a, he still to this day is our fattest president. Uh, I believe he weighed 325 pounds and he was so big, he actually got stuck in the uh, White House tub. And, you know, they had to bring in a new tub for him. You know, so just imagine that a president getting stuck in the tub and butt naked and People have to come help him out. So, yeah. But the thing is, Taft did what Teddy was trying to do, and he actually broke up the companies that were monopolies, uh, busting them down from one company to like four or five companies, uh, and then had them basically they had to compete with one, one another to provide services and goods for the consumers, which brought down the cost and things like that, which was good for the consumer. Now. That was one thing Teddy liked, but there were other things that Teddy didn't like that Taft was doing, and so he decided, you know what, I'm going to run, and so they ran against each other. The Republicans, however, supported Taft, and some Republicans broke off and joined Teddy Roosevelt. Now, that group became known as the Bull Moose a Progressive Party, 
and Teddy actually got shot before a speech. He got shot in the chest. And the thing is, the guy who sh shoots him, basically, Teddy, you know, he thinks, he, oh, I killed Teddy Roosevelt, but Teddy didn't die. Teddy, in fact, was so such a tough guy, he went out and gave the speech and basically told people, look, you, you heard that shot? Yeah, that was me. Yeah, look, it, I got shot in the chest, but here I am giving the speech. And he famously says, it takes more than a bullet to take down a bull moose. And uh, people are like, yeah, yeah, Teddy. And he continues on with the speech with a bullet in his chest as he's bleeding. Again, tough man. Um, but even with all that toughness, they split their political party. And the Democrats are still supporting their guy. So while one group is split in half, the other political party is whole. And the thing is, uh, when the election comes, the Democrats win. And Woodrow Wilson becomes president of the United States. Now, Woodrow Wilson is the only president to have a doctorate degree. Right? Other presidents have had their masters, their bachelors, um, you know, certificates. Some of them even go to college. But the thing is, he is the only doctor still to this day. So there's a little Jeopardy question for you. All right. Now, here's where I change things up a little bit. Um, if you have the packet, the question will be different on your packet than it is on the this midpoint question. So I do apologize, but the thing is, I felt this one, this question was actually a little bit better. Um, so that's why it was took me a little bit day longer to make this video than it did um, you know, the other videos. So this is the new question. And it's, do you think that Wilson only won because Teddy and Tap split up their political party? Why or why not? And justify your answer. Uh, now, I know you are not going to read their campaign speeches and things like that or watch the videos and things like that. But I'm just asking, do you think it was, that was the only reason that he won? You know, or do you think that maybe he did, you know, um, persuade other people to vote for him, that he got more backing because, you know, the other two were fighting or one group felt that Teddy or Taft was doing worse or, you know, for the country. So I'm just asking, do you think that that's the only reason he won because the two parties split? All right. So go ahead and answer that question. Um, and I'm looking at the clock right now and there's like two minutes left. So there is going to be a part two to this video. So, uh, Look out for that, okay? And then we'll finish up these notes. All right, so go ahead and answer this question.